Hi, everybody. It's Fred Fox here, Terry's older brother. Hey, I just sorry that um, you may not have been able to uh, uh, join us on the uh, virtual meetup with, with myself, with the uh, various virtual uh, presentations that we did over, over a week there. Um, but uh, hopefully you're able to um, join, join us here and, um, and to do that. I just want to say to all of you, to the staff and the students of your school and, and your families that, um, you know, we've been thinking about you for the last year. Hopefully you've been uh, staying safe with your families and doing all the right things that we all need to do uh, during this difficult time. I'm hoping today to be able to, uh, you know, present to you, you know, Terry's story, uh, my story with Terry as we were growing up, but uh, mainly Terry's story through some photos and uh, little stories about uh, Terry and I as we grew up and our, our, our family as well. So, and Terry's Marathon of Hope, of course. So thank you so much to you and your schools um, uh, for keeping Terry's dream alive for the past 41 years. It's really, you know, schools and uh, the Terry Fox runs and the fundraising that you do every year that has kept Terry's legacy alive. Uh, Terry wanted to make a difference and uh, schools across Canada and around the world are, are truly doing that. So I'm um, gonna start now with, uh, you know, sharing some photos and some memories of uh, growing up with Terry. You know, if you don't know, Terry and I, although, um, you know, we were raised here in British Columbia, um, we were born in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, this photo here is uh, taken in 1962. Uh, or in 1960, I believe. Terry was only a couple of years old. I was three. Mom and dad were born in Manitoba, dad in Winnipeg, and mom in a small farming community in southwestern Manitoba. Terry and I did everything together. And, and as you would, if you were have a brother or sister, younger or older, Terry and I did everything together. We competed against each other. We challenged each other. So 1960, it's just Terry and I, but uh, as the family grew, um, you know, Daryl and Judy, uh, joined us as well. So another photo of Terry, one of my favorite pictures of Terry and I. Terry in this picture is only four years old. I'm five in a small community in southern Manitoba where our grandparents lived at the time. And, and um, you know, Terry was very determined. Our mom shares stories, uh, mom shared stories when she traveled across Canada about Terry being four years old, like he is in this picture here. Um, you know, sitting in our living room, trying to build a pyramid out of the wooden blocks and ever you, know, you get a couple of rows built up and the, the pyramid would tumble down. So we'd build them back up again and get a few more and it would tumble down. And mom was watching Terry from the kitchen and noticed that he never quit, never got mad or angry or frustrated or went on to doing something else. Terry stuck with it. And he built that, uh, those blocks up until the pyramid took that shape and been, was able to you know, stand back and be proud of what he'd accomplished. And that's just the way Terry was, very determined, had that never uh, quit attitude. And uh, our mom told, taught us from a very young age that you, know, you finish what you start. Didn't matter what it was, building a pyramid of blocks, coloring a picture in a photo, maybe playing sports. You, you start something, you see it to the end. And Terry kind of, that was one of Terry's mottos. Um, we moved to Transcona just outside of Winnipeg, a suburb now, and uh, uh, mom and dad bought their first house. And this is um, uh, uh, the little guy sitting between Terry and I in the photo is Daryl, brother Daryl, who joined Terry during the Marathon of Hope. Daryl was 18, graduating from high school, joined Terry and his friend Doug Allward in St. John, New Brunswick, and was able to help out with some of the chores. Mom and dad moved their, their young family, um, you know, to Porcoquilla in British Columbia. And well, actually, first of all, to Surrey, BC, a part of Vancouver um, in 1966. And mom and dad taught all of us, Terry, Daryl, Judy, and I, that it was important to work hard, uh, help out around the house, do your chores, respect other people, have good manners. And in this photo here, here Terry and I are, um, um, you know, washing the dishes, taking our time uh, turns to whether we're washing or drying and just, just the way it was. We, you know, had to help out around the house as well. Um, so the four Fox kids, Terry, Daryl, myself, and our little sister, Judy. Judy would be seven years younger than Terry. And at one point, uh, Judy also works for the Terry Fox Foundation. And for, for a while there, Judy was the one who would coordinate and work with schools and communities right across 
uh, around the world. Uh, about 30 different countries around the world outside of Canada also have Terry Fox events and Judy was very much a part of that. So um, it's amazing to know that Terry's message of hope isn't just here in Canada, but around the world. Um, we moved to Port Coquitlam in 1968 and uh, you know, a big part of us growing up uh, was playing sports. Terry loved to compete, loved to play sports. Terry would be the first one to tell you that he wasn't the best athlete. He wasn't the best student in class. He had to work hard, harder than anyone else to accomplish the goals that he set for himself. We played all kinds of sports. Terry wasn't afraid to fail. He, um, uh, even if he wasn't good at a certain sport, he, he tried it just so, you know, he could say he could play. And uh, um, in this picture here, Terry was 10 years old playing soccer. This is where he met his good friend, Doug Allward. They played soccer together. They were 10 years old. And beyond after that, they became really close friends um, in high school. And as we all know, during the Marathon of Hope. Uh, again, the Fox Kids, 1970, uh, myself and Daryl and Terry and sister Judy. 1970, Terry would have been 12, 13 years old. Um, when we went to school in Port Coquitlam, we had elementary schools, we had junior high and we had senior high. Junior high went from grade eight to 10. And around this time of this photo, Terry would have been, go been going uh, to Mary Hill Junior High uh, starting grade eight, grade eight uh, to 10 was junior high school. And, um, you know, Terry tried out for the grade eight basketball team. I was in grade nine. Um, Terry practiced with the team for a couple of weeks. After practice, coach pulled Terry aside away from the rest of the team and um, said to Terry, you know what, Terry, your skill level isn't quite where we need it to be yet. Maybe, maybe the uh, wrestling team, maybe the cross country team would be more suited for you. And Terry took that as a challenge. Every day, Terry would be you know, in the gym at lunchtime or the first one to be at school and practice a little bit before class uh, started. On the weekends, Terry and his good friend Doug Allward would shoot baskets. Terry never quit that grade eight year, got to play a few minutes here or there. But by the time he was in grade 10, his final year of junior high, Terry was one of the starting guards and the captain of the team. And uh, that came out of hard work and determination. That's just the way Terry was. He, he was never gonna quit. He was always gonna work his hardest, even though he, it was uh, you know, assumed that he wasn't gonna be the best that he could be. Um, Terry uh, graduated from senior high school, Port Coquitlam Senior High School in 1976. And Terry, um, this is his basketball, grade 12 uh, basketball team. You might be able to see in the photo, Terry on um, my left. Uh, number four, Terry was a Boston Bruin fan, loved Bobby Orr, and that's why he uh, is uh, wearing number four. Um, you know, it was after uh, high school that Terry decided that he was going to go to uh, um, university. Actually, that's where I am today. Simon Fraser University is where Terry decided to attend. And I can remember him telling his buddies uh, during that summer before university started that he was going to go up to Simon Fraser and try out for the basketball team. And Terry's friends would kind of chuckle at him and laugh and say, Fox, you're never going to make the basketball team at Simon Fraser. You're not good enough. They don't know who you are. And Terry said, I won't know unless I try. And that's what Terry did. Terry went up to Simon Fraser University, tried out for the basketball team, and through guts and determination, he made the junior varsity team in his freshman year, his first year. Coaches would tell our parents, Terry had no business being up here trying for the basketball team, but we couldn't cut him because he made every one of those players that we had recruited from all across Canada better, better by his attitude and what he did to show that he could compete with anybody as long as he was trying his hardest. And that's exactly what Terry would do. It was during that first year of university here at Simon Fraser that Terry developed a bit of a sore knee and he kind of ignored it, thought it was just an injury. Um, and then one day in March of 1977, still in his first year of university, Terry uh, couldn't get up to walk to get to school that morning. The pain was so bad in his knee. Our dad took Terry to the hospital. He did some tests and they found that he, that he had a type of bone cancer and uh, he would have to lose part of his right leg above the knee. Terry was only 18 years old. I was 19 and I can honestly tell you back in 1977, Terry and I really didn't understand what cancer was. 
we didn't know anyone in our family or mom and dad's friends who had had cancer. Um, I can remember saying to Terry the night before his operation, how come you have to have cancer? All your dreams are coming true. You're, you're going to university, getting a degree, um, go, you know, playing basketball at a high level. Why you? And Terry would say, Fred, why not me? I've been told all my life that I'm not good enough. I'm not big enough. I'm not smart enough. This is just another challenge I have to overcome. Terry had his operation the next morning, and within about two weeks, Terry was fitted with an artificial leg, learning how to walk all over again. The people at the rehab center couldn't believe the determination that Terry had, but that's just the way Terry was. He wasn't going to let this slow him down. But it was truly the next 18 months that impacted Terry the most. Terry had to take chemotherapy treatment. It, didn't, it made him very sick. It was, he was taking chemotherapy to get rid of any cancer cells that might be left in his body. And that's where he saw other people going through the same thing. And Terry decided then that he needed to do something about it. After Terry um, finished his chemotherapy treatment, I cut almost two years later in February of 1979, Terry started to run. He started to train, maybe only running 100 meters at a time around our block and then to the local track at the high school and then running maybe five, 10 kilometers at a time. And so Terry did some of his training up here at Simon Fraser as, uh, as well. Um, Terry also, as part of his training, began to play wheelchair basketball. Terry thought because he lost part of his right leg that he'd never be able to play sports again. That was his life. He loved to compete, loved to play sport. He got a call from Rick Hansen. Some of you might know the name Rick Hansen. Uh, Rick invited Terry to play wheelchair basketball. They became good friends and good teammates representing BC at national championship. And that's what this is, a picture of Terry holding a couple of trophies that he had won, the team had won uh, at, at national championships. Um, Terry uh, celebrated his 21st birthday in July of 1979. And during this time, he's really doing a lot of training, weightlifting, is, he's in good shape, feeling the best he's ever felt, doing lots of running. Probably at this point, he's running maybe 15 kilometers every day. In September, a couple of months later, Labor Day long weekend, Terry and Daryl, Doug Allward, Rick Hansen go up to Prince George, BC to run a I think it was around a 25, 26 uh, mile kilometer race. Um, Terry starts at the start line with everybody else. But when that race is over, Terry finished in last place. He came underneath that finish banner in last place. But being last wasn't a big deal to Terry. All that mattered to, to, to Terry that day was he crossed the finish line. He finished what he started. That thing that our mom had taught us from a very young age. Terry came home and told our mom that uh, he hadn't been training for the Vancouver Marathon like he had told mom and dad uh, to the Vancouver Marathon would take place in, in uh, May of 1980, a few months later. Terry said, mom, I'm training because I want to run across Canada to raise money for cancer research so no one else would ever have to suffer the causes of cancer. Our mom, being a protective mom, got very, very upset. She said, why would you do a crazy thing like that? Why don't you just run from the Alberta BC border, finish, run through BC, finish in Vancouver and Stanley Park, raise money that way. And Terry said, mom, not only people in BC get cancer, people right across Canada do, I have to start in St. John's, Newfoundland. And that's exactly what Terry did on April 12th, 1980 after you know, so many miles of training. Terry ran over 5,000 kilometers in training before he arrived in St. John's. Terry and Doug in St. John's. Terry uh, left St. John's. Not very many people knew what he was doing. The fanfare wasn't very big. There was a, a, you know, a few people there to see him, that city, see him leave at City Hall. Um, he made his way through, Newf through Newfoundland. It was cold, winter, middle of April, snowing. Terry, about two weeks in, had a really bad day, and he wrote later on in his journal, Terry wrote, I was dizzy and lightheaded, but I made it to the van. Uh, it was a frightening experience. Was it all over? Was everything finished? Would I let everyone down? But I told myself it was too late to give up. I uh, would keep going no matter what happened, and I went out and did 15 push-ups in the road. I want to set an example that would never be forgotten. Terry made his way through Newfoundland, the Maritime Provinces, Quebec, 
And slowly, as he made his way further west, more and more people realized and understood what Terry was doing. Terry would speak at schools during the April, May, and June, uh, community events. Finally, when Terry hit the Ontario border is kind of where everything went really, really crazy and, and in a good way. Terry, lots of people to see Terry, lots of money being raised. I had an opportunity to see Terry arrive when he, when he arrived in Toronto. I really hadn't seen Terry do any of his training miles when he was back home here in British Columbia. Uh, I wasn't living at home. I finally got to see Terry run for the very first time when he arrived in Toronto. Thousands of people lining the roads, 10,000 more at City Hall in Toronto. Terry did a, a, a big speech there at City Hall, Nathan Phillips Square to thousands of people. And um, I finally got to witness firsthand the impact that Terry was having on our, our country. Um, Terry, a couple of days later on July 13th, uh, leaving, heading west towards Oakville and, uh, and uh, Mississauga along the lake shore, Terry ran through all kinds of weather, the cold, cool, snowy weather in Newfoundland, wind, rain, and the heat and humidity of Southern Ontario. I don't know how Terry could run in that every day. Terry was running close to a marathon every day. Um, I eventually saw Terry run again a month later. My wife, Teresa, and I were on vacation and we drove east from Coquitlam where we were living and found Terry, Daryl, and Doug in Northern Ontario, just south of Wawa, Ontario. And this picture here, Terry had heard for several days about this big hill south of Wawa called Montreal River Hill. And it was about three kilometers long and uh, it was amazing to watch him run up that hill. Uh, and he, you know, it was just a big, huge goal for him to accomplish. Uh, Terry loved Northern Ontario. I think it really reminded him of a lot about getting, getting home or reminded him a lot of home, the terrain, the, the trees, the, the water as we have here in British Columbia. Uh, they kept track of the mileage on the side of the van that Terry and Doug and Daryl used. Um, I was with Terry on mile 3,300. 31, Terry ran um, 3,339 miles before he was forced to stop in, in Thunder Bay. Terry was really quite concerned at this point in August, about August 17th, uh, of uh, when he would finish back home in British Columbia. And it was looking like he would be finishing in, in late uh, November, possibly of 1980, and running through the Rocky Mountains in the middle of winter. So the very last picture taken of Terry and I during the Marathon of Hope in Wawa, Ontario. It was August 19th. Uh, Teresa and I had spent three or four days with Terry, Darrell, and Doug. And it was now time for us to drive home, so back home to BC. We had to get back home for work. So the last picture of Terry and I during the Marathon of Hope. Um, it's about August 19th. Two weeks later, I was with my mom and dad. It was September 1st. We were at a fundraising event in Chilliwack, BC, about 100K kilometers east of Vancouver and the uh, Armed Forces Base was having a fundraiser. At the end of the day, my dad's driving the car. We're heading back to Port Coquitlam and out of the blue, dad decides to turn on the radio to listen to the news. And wouldn't you know, the very first news story was Terry Fox is in hospital in Thunder Bay. That's all we heard. I had no idea, no cell phones. Nobody could phone mom and dad at that time. An hour later, we arrive at the house we could hear the phone ringing. Mom and dad run into the house to answer the phone. And it was Terry. And Terry said to mom, mom, I have to come back home. Uh, the cancer has returned to my lungs. I have to come back home and get better. So mom and dad flew to Thunder Bay, brought Terry home. And Canadians responded in such a positive way. So much support for Terry and uh, letters and everything else, and, and, you know, hoping that Terry would get better. Um, a couple of weeks later, Terry received the highest honor any ordinary Canadian citizen could receive, the Companion of the Order of Canada on September 19th. At this point, Terry truly believes that he's going to get better, that the, you know, the, his cancer is going to, he's going to recover again, and he's going to be able to get back to Thunder Bay in the spring of 1981. But that just didn't happen. You know, Terry was running it's so hard to believe Terry was running a marathon every day, 42 kilometers every day. But what kept Terry going was, was those people that he truly felt that he left behind in the hospital. And that's why he wanted to con continue his run. 
he was planning on getting back out there in, in, in the spring of 1981 in Thunder Bay and continuing his marathon of hope. But Terry's health didn't get better. That wasn't going to happen. And on June 28th, 1981, a few months after he was forced to stop the marathon of hope, Terry passed away. And uh, this appeared in a Toronto newspaper the next day on June 29th kind of symbolizing that Terry was passing on the Marathon of Hope Baton onto each and every one of us to continue. And that's exactly what Terry said when he was in Scarborough, Ontario. Um, Terry said in a, in a passionate, uh, inspiring speech, Terry said, even if I don't finish, we need others to continue. It's got to keep going without me. And that's what you and your school and schools across Canada do every year and communities across Canada. They, we've taken up that challenge of continuing Terry's dream, uh, just like he asked us to, that, to continue it even if he wasn't able to. So thank you on behalf of um, uh, our family, the Terry Fox Foundation for all that you do in keeping Terry's dream alive. Terry was just an average ordinary kid who had set goals for himself, had to work harder than anybody else. Terry truly believed that anything was possible if you try. So I just want to leave you with uh, our mom traveled across the country for many, many, many years. We lost our mom 10 years ago almost now. And mom would finish her presentations by saying this. She would say, just like Terry, always set goals and never, ever give up on your dreams. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you so much for all that you do in keeping Terry's dream alive. Bye-bye.